Welcome to another episode of Why I Didn't, the mostly useless series where I tell you why I did not choose a particular specialty. And in this episode, we're covering general surgery. What's going on guys? For those of you who are new here, my name is Kevin Jabal, physician entrepreneur based in Las Vegas, formerly in plastic surgery. Now, if you want a more useful and comprehensive overview of general surgery in an unbiased and objective perspective, then check out So You Want to Be a General Surgeon, which is on the Med School Insiders channel, link in the description. And if you're a pre-med trying to get into med school, then good news, the Med School Insiders MCAT course is now live. For a limited time, we're offering an early bird sale using the coupon code MCATEARLYBIRD22, which is gonna give you 50% off your purchase. If you don't like it, you get a 10 day, 100% money back guarantee, so there's no risk. And a little secret, if you're a channel member on either this channel or on Med School Insiders, you can get the course at even a larger discount. With that being said, let's dive into general surgery, starting with what I liked about the field. First up, you have the most options for fellowships. So compared to any other surgical residency, you have the broadest range of fellowships to choose from. You have things like trauma, breast, endocrine, minimally invasive, surgical oncology, hepatobiliary, colorectal, transplant, cardiothoracic, vascular, pediatrics, and of course, plastics. Some of these are technically not fellowships, like plastics I know is a second residency, technically, but most people just consider it a fellowship. But the cool thing here is that even if you haven't figured out exactly what type of surgery you want to pursue by the time you graduate medical school, you now have time to explore the different options and choose later on when you're in residency. Number two, it's real surgery. So within surgical subspecialties, there are varying degrees and types of surgery. So do you like the big open cases that are exciting and expose more anatomy, they're kind of messy, or maybe prefer the alternative, the more minimally invasive laparoscopic cases where you have ports on the abdominal wall and you stick cameras and various tools through those ports. Or maybe you like procedures that are quick and dirty, things like C-sections, or maybe on the other end, you like more slow, meticulous, detailed, like a plastic surgeon doing a microsurgical free tissue flap where you're reconnecting blood vessels. Now for me, the big open cases were always a little bit more exciting than the laparoscopic cases. And then of course, slow, meticulous, detailed cases were also a little bit more rewarding than the quicker ones. Now, that being said, there is lots of laparoscopy in general surgery if you want that, but there's also plenty of big open cases depending on how you decide to subspecialize. And while I didn't enjoy every type of surgery within general surgery, there are so many subspecialties within the field that you can find the type that resonates most with you. Okay, also, this is the real deal kind of surgery. Some people, not me, okay, not me, would say that ophthalmology or ob aren't real surgery, but no one's ever gonna deny that general surgery is as real as it gets. Again, to my ob and opto colleagues, that's not what I think. You guys are real surgeons, okay? It's just, I'm repeating what I've heard from other colleagues for full transparency to the viewers. So um, yeah, please don't cancel me. Okay, thanks. Number three is that it is great for impatient people. And this is the thing I love about all surgeries, general surgery included. You don't have to counsel a patient and then talk about drug or lifestyle changes and then you wait six months to see what happens. Instead, you diagnose a pathology and if it's appropriate, you manage it surgically. And that immediate sense of seeing a problem and then fixing it with your own hands is something that's just so beautiful about surgery in general. The patient's quality of life immediately improves and there's something about that that's just very satisfying. Now, obviously this isn't always the case and you need to know when to operate and when not to. It's easy to become biased and scalpel happy. It's like asking a barber if you need a haircut. And that brings me to number four, which is another nice thing for the impatient people out there is that rounding both for general surgery and most other surgical specialties is usually quite short and sweet. Depending on the type of surgery you're doing, you're probably gonna have at least a little bit of clinic, but it's a lot less than most other non-surgical specialties. And number five, you are a true life saver. The whole saving lives glory for doctors is often overstated for most specialties. I mean, let's be real. General surgery is one of the very few specialties where it actually holds true. General surgeons have the broadest skill set of any surgeon, and they're one of the few types of doctors that you want to have around when shit hits the fan. Things like necrotizing infections, or ischemic bowel, or massive bleeding, and a whole lot more. And there's something badass about knowing that you can handle most things that require procedural intervention in order to save a life. You can't really quite say the same in most cases about neurosurgeons, definitely not plastic surgeons, orthopedic surgeons, ENTs, urologists, 
and a lot of other surgeons. All right, next up, what I did not like about general surgery. Now, you should be ignoring everything I say in any of these why I didn't videos, but an extra disclaimer is appropriate right here because a lot of things that I'm about to say in this section, I have changed my mind about, but these are more or less the opinions that I held back in medical school, which helped me decide what specialty I wanted to pursue, right? And those opinions were largely shaped by my peers, my mentors, and of course my experiences rotating on various services. Number one is the masochistic reputation. There's something hardcore and badass about the masochism in surgery, but general surgery takes it to an extreme, an extreme to the point where I didn't find it as appealing compared to other surgical subspecialties. And also I think that as a result, the whole asshole personality stereotype is a downstream effect of this. And some people really despise that asshole personality type for good reason. I personally don't mind the whole blunt directness or being rough around the edges. In fact, that actually makes me sometimes feel more comfortable in certain ways because it allows for open, unfiltered communication that can happen more freely, which is more my style rather than having to like tiptoe around the issue. It's like, hey, let's just like handle things and move on. But that doesn't excuse like yelling or calling people names or being very derogatory, obviously. Come on, come on. I, I don't know. You're useless. I will also say that I don't like the high average level of misery that I've seen amongst most general surgery residents and actually a lot of attendings too. Again, this is my opinion from med school, so please don't cancel me, thanks. Number two is a challenging residency. Now, all surgical residencies are gonna be challenging, but general surgery has a particularly bad reputation. You're gonna be pushing 80 plus hours a week easily on most weeks. Again, I think this is a function of the whole masochism and attracting a certain personality type and also the whole old general surgery macho culture. Several decades ago, there were surgical programs that would take pride in having a near 100% divorce rate amongst their residents, which is completely asinine. That's mostly gone now, thankfully, but you still have a much more brutalistic culture compared to most other specialties from what I've seen. Oh, and also if you do want to subspecialize with a fellowship after general surgery residency, then you're gonna be in training for a long time. So general surgery residency is five years. And if you wanna go into something more competitive after for fellowship, you're probably gonna do one or two years of research in that residency. So now let's say six to seven years plus a one to three year fellowship, depending on what you pursue. And this is a big reason why the direct pathway for certain surgical subspecialties is actually much more competitive than going general surgery and then fellowship later. So for example, to become a plastic surgeon, you can go into an integrated residency, which is just six years dedicated plastic surgery, or you do five years of general surgery residency plus three years additionally of plastic surgery training afterwards. So that's six versus eight, plus any additional years of research you do in your general surgery residency. So that's why going the integrated path for plastic surgery is way more competitive than general surgery. And if you're applying, you actually use general surgery as a backup in case you don't match into an integrated six year program, then you can go general surgery and then three years of plastics in the future. Number three is anatomy. Now, most but not all surgical specialties tend to specialize in a certain organ system or anatomical region. Think of cardiothoracic surgery or colorectal surgery as examples. Or at least they share a common tissue type, like plastic surgery mostly focusing on soft tissues. Again, mostly, but not entirely. Now for me, the types of anatomy and surgery in general surgery were just less appealing to me. Minimally invasive surgery is one example of a surgery type that is super cool, but it's just not something that I was really able to get excited about. And because of the subspecialization of medicine over the years, General surgery is largely now abdominal and endocrine surgery. So unless you're super rural, you're not really dealing with pathologies that a neurosurgeon or an orthopod or a plastic surgeon or an ENT or a urologist can handle themselves. Whenever there's the option to see a specialist, patients are gonna go there because they specialize in that thing rather than going to a general surgeon. And that brings me to point number four, the bread and butter. Every specialty has their bread and butter, meaning the main pathologies you're dealing with on a regular basis. The bread and butter of general surgery just wasn't something that I enjoyed. It was things like laparoscopic cholecystectomies or lap coles, where you remove the gallbladder or things like hernia repair or appendectomies. And again, these were mostly abdominal or gastrointestinal surgeries and they weren't as exciting to me after I saw a handful. I just couldn't see myself doing them for the rest of my life. Number five is the challenging lifestyle. Now general surgery is obviously not a quote lifestyle specialty, meaning that you're often working pretty challenging hours. Now obviously take everything I say with a huge boulder of salt, 
but some will say that you have a choice and agency once you're an attending physician. From my experience and from my conversations with actual surgeons and colleagues, it's gonna be a slog. I mean, obviously during your residency, but even then in the first few years of your life as an attending and as you're bringing up your, your patient census, it's a grind. Of the handful of general surgery attendings that I know, they all still work pretty challenging hours and challenging lifestyles. And some would say, hey, hey just dial back the hours, not a big deal. But I think the reason more don't do that is that it's easier said than done, right? Because you've been training for so long after medical school, you're paying back all your student loans, you're trying to play catch up and get into a better financial position for you and your family. And there's been this opportunity cost of not working and not saving anything for the first decade and a half of your adult life. So if you're on trauma call, it's not terribly uncommon to get called in at 2 a.m. and then you have your regular day of clinic or elective surgery starting at seven in the morning. And for tons of other specialties, you never really need to step foot in the hospital at night after you graduate residency. But in general surgery, that's definitely not the norm. If your practice is purely elective, then that's a different story, but that's more of an exception than the rule. Number six is bad news. There are certain specialties in which you're delivering bad news more frequently compared to others. Now, general surgery is very broad, so you can't really say that general surgery is delivering bad news frequently because a trauma surgeon is gonna be different compared to a pediatric surgeon, as an example. I remember when I was on my neurosurgery rotation, I remember being so surprised by how much the poor patient outcomes actually weighed down on me. And it wasn't like I felt overtly sad, it was more I noticed a shift in my energy from being more upbeat, optimistic, and excited to more like solemn. And I felt that being exposed to that every day for years and years was just gonna weigh on my mental health. Some of you might be surprised, but despite seeming like a robot on YouTube, I do actually feel empathy quite strongly sometimes. I mean, just when my internal algorithms and protocols permit me to do so. But in general surgery, there are some areas that similarly expose you to these poor outcomes. And number seven is the last pick perception. Okay, this is not something I believe anymore. Don't wanna offend anyone or propagate any damaging or misleading stereotypes. This was just the reputation that I had heard from other medical students and even residents actually back when I was in med school. They would say that general surgery is the least desirable surgical specialty, that you have the worst lifestyle, you deal with the nastiest things like abdominal cavity and colon, that it's the least competitive of any surgical specialty. You only go into it if you couldn't get into something better. Now, obviously I do not believe this is the case. I think that general surgery is an awesome field for the right person. But again, we're shaped by what we hear and what we see. And this is what I had heard of general surgery when I was a medical student and from, from both actually many residents and fellow medical students. And this was part of the reason that I was turned away from the field. And there you have it. That's why I didn't pursue general surgery. If you want a more useful overview of general surgery, then please watch So You Want To Be A General Surgeon or another video from my Why I Didn't playlist. Much love and I'll see you guys there.